My name is Marcy and I am the first Vice President of Kern Dance Alliance, a nonprofit organization supporting and promoting dance and the arts in Kern County, California. Welcome to Books in Motion. Celebrating our fourth year, Books in Motion combines dance and literacy to encourage children to read. In collaboration with our partners, Kern County Library and Kern Literacy Council, Books in Motion has served over 3,000 children and have provided nearly 2,000 free books to all participants. In years past, Books in Motion has been a live experience with dance organizations taking performances of cherished children's books on tour to libraries across our county. But this year, things are a little bit different. But the mission is still the same. We want to encourage children to open books and read because dance has inspired them to do so. We encourage you to check out all of the fantastic Kern County Dance Organizations providing you with an opportunity to dance and read this summer. New videos will be announced weekly all summer long. After the show, our friends from the library will be showing you how to create a super fun craft to inspire you to keep reading and also dancing. Hey moms, dads, and special guardians, Books in Motion is pleased to offer a free book and free craft for curbside pickup at various libraries in Kern County. Check out www.kerndance.org forward slash BIM for a complete list. And one last thing before the show, we must take a moment to thank our sponsors that have generously helped make Books in Motion possible. Chevron, the Robert Grimm Family Foundation, Virginia and Alfred Harold Foundation, and Kern Family Healthcare. Thank you so much for your continual support in helping make Books in Motion possible. Hi. I'm Erica Ubaroth, the Artistic Director of Bakersfield City Ballet, and today I'm going to read you 12 Dancing Princesses, retold and illustrated by Bridget Berger. Once upon a time, in a kingdom far away, there were 12 princesses. Their names were Rose, Iris, Daisy, Tulip, Petunia, Bluebell, Clover, Violet, Zinnia, Lilac, Daffodil, and Poppy. Each one was lovelier than the flower she was named for. Although their lives were charmed, they had developed a mysterious problem. Every morning, without fail, the soles of the princess's shoes were worn out and full of holes. And the princesses spent every day sleeping in the palace garden, snoozing and lounging like cats in the shade. The king had to hire a cobbler, especially for the princesses. His name was Pip. He worked day and night to make shoes fit for royalty. Pip liked Princess Poppy because she always told him how beautiful the new shoes were. They are so, she would say as she yawned, lovely, Pip. And then she would fall asleep again just like that. Poppy really liked Pip too, but she just couldn't keep her eyes open long enough to say so. The, the king soon became quite concerned with the princess's strange sleepy habits. How can I expect my daughters to rule the kingdom after me when they spend their days napping, he thought. So he made a proclamation, solve the mystery of the sleepy princesses and you shall have any treasure your heart desires, no matter how great. Soon, all sorts of scientists, scholars, doctors, detectives, fortune tellers, and philosophers arrived to lend their expertise. They studied the princesses while they slept or tried to sleep. They inspected and inquired searched and researched, examined and explored. Of course, all of this only made the princesses wearier than ever. The experts tried and tried to explain the mystery of the sleepy princesses and the worn out shoes, but they could not. If the brightest and best minds in the kingdom cannot help us, 
who can? The king sighed, and great sorrow fell over the court. Only one person would not give up so easily. Pip, he devised a plan to solve the mystery and went to work immediately. That day, he made himself a pair of the softest, most silent shoes possible. And that night, after everyone had gone to bed and the castle was dark and still, Pip snuck to the princess's room, put his ear to the door, and waited. Soon he heard a stirring, rustling, swooshing sound, but not a single word, not even a whisper. Pip peeked through the door and saw all 12 princesses dressed in their finest gowns. They looked as though they were going to a grand ball, but their eyes were still closed as if they were sleeping. Are they sleepwalkers? wondered Pip. But just then, an extraordinary thing happened. A trap door appeared in the floor and its doors swung wide open. Inside were steep stairs leading down, down, down. The princesses descended one by one, still fast asleep. Pip crept along behind them quieter than a mouse in his exceptional shoes. The stairs led into a cavern filled with a forest of shimmering, shining, glittering trees made of silver, gold, and diamonds. Perched in the trees were beautiful jewel-colored birds singing quiet lullabies. This is a magic place, thought Pip. No one would believe it unless they saw it. So he broke a few twigs off the trees to keep his proof. At the edge of the forest was a dark, dreamy lake with boats waiting at its shore. The princesses stepped aboard and Pip had to jump on quickly before they began to float silently toward an island. This is definitely some kind of enchantment, thought Pip. On the island was a ballroom with candles flickering and music playing. The princesses began to dance, twirling and turning, dipping and bowing, graceful as ballerinas. No wonder their shoes wear out every night, thought Pip. The princesses danced for hours and hours until morning. Suddenly the music faded and just as quietly as they had arrived, the princesses left the island. I can't let this continue, said Pip. He had read the, enough stories to know that kisses were almost always the best antidote for spells but he was so much of a gentleman that he could only bring himself to kiss Poppy's delicate hand. No sooner had he done so than her eyes fluttered open and so did all her sisters' eyes. Before anyone could utter a word, the forest of silver and gold and diamonds began to crumble into vapor and dust. The princesses hurried up the stairs and into the room where the trap door slammed shut and disappeared in a whirl of smoke. What happened? asked Rose, rubbing her eyes. Why are we all dressed up, yawned Zinnia. You were under a spell, your highnesses, explained Pip. You traveled to an underground land and danced all night. I followed you there and... And you broke the spell, asked Poppy, who was quite happy to see Pip. Yes, I suppose I did, said Pip. Let's go tell father that the mystery is solved, she exclaimed. They rushed to the throne room to give the king the good news, and Pip told the whole story. Do you have proof that this underground land existed? asked the king. Pip took the silver, gold, and diamond twigs from his pocket. They sparkled in the daylight. I knew there was still magic stirring in these castle walls, said the king. You are more clever and brave than all the wisest people in the kingdom put together, and you have saved my daughters from their enchantment. So what reward do you choose? 1,000 bags of gold? A chest of diamonds? A castle of your own? What is your heart's desire? Asked the king. Your, your majesty, more than anything else, I'd like to ask for Poppy's hand in marriage, answered Pip nervously. Poppy smiled brightly. Yes, she said. Yes, of course. 
From that day on, the princesses were happy and lively, and they never spent another day snoozing in the garden. Pip and Poppy were married, and at their wedding, the princesses danced more beautifully and joyfully than they ever had before. And of course, they all lived happily ever after. Thank you for listening to the story. I hope you enjoyed that. Now, I invite you to join the princesses to learn their princess waltz. It's your turn to dance, twirl and turn, dip and bow, and be as graceful as a ballerina. After you've learned the princess waltz, get ready for your performance with the princesses. My name's Poppy, and this is the last, last section of the waltz. Ha da dee re su su, ha da dee re su su, pique passe, pop in front, and thawed. Library's virtual edition of Books in Motion Crafts. We're grateful to partner with Kern Dance Alliance and to make this possible. 
I hope you've enjoyed the dances from some of our talented local dance companies. Okay, so let's start with this craft. To make this craft, these are the supplies that you will need. Now you can pick up a grab and go kit, a free grab and go kit at the following seven libraries. Beale Memorial Library, which is located in Bakersfield, Arvin, Delano, Taft, Tehachapi, Ridgecrest, and Kern River Valley. The supplies that you will need are six pipe cleaners, about seven to nine inches of narrow ribbon or yarn, a paper napkin, and a pair of scissors. The scissors are not included in the kit. These two pipe cleaners will make the female dancer and these four pipe cleaners will make the male dancer. Here's what our female dancer will look like. And here is what our male dancer will look like when we're finished. So let's start. First, you take your first pipe cleaner, fold it in half, you're going to make there a crease at the top. Now I want you to pinch it at the top and twist it all the way around. Then you will have something that looks like this. Then I want you to take your second pipe cleaner, fold it approximately in half, kind of dented it there so I could tell. I'm going to put it right here and I'm going to wrap it this way and the opposite way. And as a matter of fact, just to be careful, I am going to wrap this one again and this one again. So basically you have wrapped them all the way around what is going to be your head. And there you can kind of see you have a little person already. The next thing I'm gonna want you to do is take your paper napkin. So we'll put our person down and here's the paper napkin. I want you to fold it. This is called a concertina fold and you will take it and fold it forwards and backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards and one more backwards and you can see how it's folded and I'm just pinching it in the middle to keep it together you can see the front now I want you to hold this part of the napkin and this part of the napkin I'm going to start from the middle and I'm going to twist it I want to give the dancer some texture for her dress, so I'm going to twist it. There you have a twisted napkin. Now I'm going to unfold it. And now I'm going to take my scissors and the tip, probably easier to see, and I'm going to cut the very tip of the center off. You can see it right here. I'm 
just gonna cut a little bit of it off. There we go. Next, I am going to keep some slit, to cut some slits in the side, right here and here. Just little ones. And I'll also do it to this side. Now next comes a part that's just a little bit tricky. I take my person. I find it easier to put her arms over her head. I'm going to take my napkin and I am going to slide her arms up through these slits. Remember the two slits that we cut here? And you can see them. You see them sticking out? There, oh, it looks a little bit like. Yeah. And I'm gonna keep pushing and pushing because I want her head to come out of the middle. Do you see it emerging? There it is. And then I'm gonna pull gently. Now, I would like this to stay on her so I am going to take my ribbon right here and I am going to tie it around here. Can you see that? And I'm going to pull it tight. I think she needs a bow in the back. So I'm gonna pull it tight. You might need a little help with this. And then make a loop. Go all the way around. Pull that into a bow, just like you tie your shoes. You can see there's a little bow there. Now, the next step is Notice her dress is just a little long and her legs are all the way up here. Well, I would really like her dress to not be quite so long. So I am going to take and feel where her legs are. There they are. And I am going to cut slightly curved and as you fluff it out you can see there she is now I think her arms are a wee bit long I think she needs elbows and needs hands. And I could choose to cut these a little bit shorter. I think those are mighty long hands, so I'm gonna cut them a little bit shorter. It's a little hard to cut. And then there's still her elbows. And there you have your dancer. Now if you want, you can bend her feet up a little bit to help her stand a little bit better. You can see how I've done her feet. And then as I spread her out, you have there you have her. Let's see if we can get her better so you can see her. Her arms are kind of up a little. Okay, so there's our first one. We'll poof her dress out a little bit. 
Next, we are going to work on this fun guy. So we're going to start the same way. Pipe cleaner, fold it in half. See there's a U at the top. Twist halfway and then all the way around. There you go. Then about the halfway point and we're going to twist this and then this one all the way around. He's going to have long arms too. Now I really thought that my person needed uh, a shirt and pants and so forth. So I am going to give him a shirt about about there. I'm going to start with my purple one. That's not what I want to do. I want to start with the halfway and I am going to wrap it around him. First one, then the other, crossing them. Let's see. Let's see that. Cross them in front. Cross them in back. Cross them in front and cross them one more time in the back. Now I think, I think he needs a shirt. So I am going to wrap this one around this arm. Hopefully you can see that. I'm going to wrap it around his other arm. Now you don't have to make your people all the same color. You will have different colors of pipe cleaners in your kit. So he can have an orange face and a purple body. Now what that leaves is I want to do pants for him. I think he needs some pants. So again I will start with halfway and I'll wrap it around to give him um, a belt. After I've done one and then I'm going to put his leg up and his other leg up and I'm going to wrap just like I wrapped the arms. His arms are a little bit in the way, so I'll bend them up. And around and around we go. I hope you find time to watch the really fun dance videos that some of the local troops are doing as they do books in motion and they act out some of our favorite stories.
Now I kind of want to have little feet, so I'm going to put his little feet up. And then I'm going to wrap this one. Just going around and around his leg. Be careful with these pipe cleaners and don't poke yourself. They can be sharp at the ends. Then I want him to have feet, so I'll bend his feet up. And I think his arms are just a wee bit too long. So I think I'm going to cut them just a little bit, just like I cut the other one. And you know, I could be fancy and give him a belt if I wanted. This is the leftover from our dancers. You can see it's the same color from her, her arms. And I'll bend him so he has hands. And I think maybe he's leaping. So maybe I'll make him leap. And there you have it our two dancers. Oops. So thanks for tuning in and thanks for being with us this day. I hope that you enjoy Books in Motion and you remember to check out lots of books from the library. Remember all these things are free from the Kern County Library. Enjoy today's performance? We sure hope you are inspired to pick up more books and read. Head on over to kerndance.org forward slash BIM to learn all about the locations where you could pick up your free book and craft. And please do not forget to fill out our quick books in motion survey. Are you interested in looking into dance lessons after today's show? Shoot us a message or contact today's dance organization directly. Nothing makes us more happy than people dancing. Finally, please be sure to post, tag, share, and shout out Books in Motion to all of our social media friends and followers. We are so happy that you are a part of today's performance and we cannot wait to see you again at the next Books in Motion.